Is you mad? Cause I'm getting cash. That in my place. Right guys, today I will show you how to do this animation using Element 3D Flex plugin and there's also one trick that makes it feel way more premium Element 3D. Import the picture, custom layers, custom texture maps and for the layer 1 we want to select the card texture. Element 3 interface, go to the top, make a cube. The second size needs to be changed to 0 0.62 to make it a rectangle and this one, the Z, the depth of the layer has to be changed to 0 0.01. So it's a card. Then click down below on the texture and the diffuse on this error, select the card's texture, then it's already applied. And we need to do one thing most people forget. As you can see, it looks a bit shitty. This is because it's right now a glossy texture. Change the glossiness here to zero. Now in Photoshop, it's very simple. Just got a high quality print of the card. This cutout you can see was before where the original name was. Make a rectangle, then press right click and click the generator fill. So it's completely covered again. Made a text layer, picked Helvatica Neue light, it's a clean texture they use most of the time. And also you want to make sure you go into the settings and change the VA because normally you have the spacing that's way too narrow, but on these cards there it's more spaced out and all in caps. And then just make a broad selection over the card, which stuff I don't want covered. Then right click, select inverse, then click the paint bucket tool, click on it one time. And as you can see, it's perfectly filled out. The background card in the background, I just picked the sapphire preferred and did the same thing, exactly the same method. So now we're gonna go into the design aspect, make the first card and then duplicate the, the rest, the dummies, the replicate the round rectangle tool, create a card. So make sure to align the layer, change the roundness to 70, stroke color deactivated, duplicate it, disable the fill color, enable the stroke color. Also make sure to parent this to the back because back will be the whole thing, everything will be built on top of it and this will be there to control everything. Set it to two and this color exactly. For the back, make a gradient. So to get this, go on top, fill on a name, then make sure to make it a linear gradient and go into the fill color settings. On the left will be black. And if you do not have three colors, just click on it and then you have a third one. The green color I have, it's this one and that, this. After you click it off, you see these two handles like that. So we have a clean gradient going across. Then also select the back, duplicate it, put it one up and this will be the mat and this Change it to fill color to solid. This will be the mat for the rest of the layers we're gonna apply on top of it. Go into slice, make a text layer, clash display, take the bold. Also make sure to center the anchor point, then make this completely white. Duplicate this as well. SF Pro, there's like a million different styles, but we only want the expanded regular. This one looks very clean. It harmonizes with the other font. Then take both. Place them in the middle here. To animate this card, there's a few tricks, a few things you can do. Thing that many people don't even know. You can go in these settings in the world transform and then press create. And then you have a null object for the card. But it's not the only thing. We can also control the card with something else. I will show this down the line, which will be important. But for now, just take the position, put it to the side, select the round rectangle tool, change the color to this one, the roundness, turn it up to 60. Duplicate the Amex, put it on top. This will be renamed to select. Grab it to the side, change the color to this green, Proxima Nova Bold. First take the camera, press on position, split it up, make a keyframe for each. Then for the rotation, also press U, go to the beginning. Now I want it to come up like this. For the X rotation, gonna go with minus 8, 2. Then the Y rotation, 61. Z rotation, minus 31. And I want it to come up like a card. Also a tip, I always make sure to keyframe everything even if it's not changing the frame. Then here I also want to animate the X rotation on minus 22. Then the Y rotation minus 10. So it's not exactly perfect. It's always a little bit tilted. Then go to the end and I only want to change the Y rotation and the Z rotation. Change this to minus 27 and the Z rotation to minus 19. And why I do this it's so it flies up and it continuously still rotates. It's important. And also go to the Flex plugin and I will apply some curves to smooth in for the rotation. And for the last two, I'll just apply the fast linear. I also want to add some effects for the card. So go on to where the element 3D is applied. Add a CC light sweep. Also close this. Then go a little bit at the beginning. Make a keyframe for the center. Drag it to the side. And you can already see it does like the sick shine. It's, it's sick. Then press U to reveal the keyframe properties. Go forward. Drag it full on over the whole composition so it does a full slide like that. Then also duplicate these and right click on it. Go at the bottom on keyframe assistant, then time reverse the keyframe so it goes in both directions. Also for easing, I applied the smooth in. Now we need to change the CC light sweep settings. Go to the width, 
change it to 100 to 50, sweep intensity to 7, the edge intensity to 100, the edge thickness to 5. Make all these things, not the null object, will be the mat here. So as you can see, it comes from outside, inside. Drop shadow, but it will be very subtle. And for the values, the distance to 0. So it's exactly behind the card and the softness to 100. Now we'll animate these text step by step. And first I want to reveal the Amex, then the Centurion. Basically the Amex pops up and Centurion comes from the bottom. Everything with a bounce. So first the Amex, make a keyframe on the scale, change it to zero, scale up to here. Then go to the bounce of the Flex plugin, select the scale, put the bounce on it. Also keyframe the opacity, go to zero. Turn it up again, then add the fill effect. Take this same highlight color we have for the select, make a keyframe here, then change this to fully white, the final color. Effects and presets again, add fast box blur, make a keyframe at the beginning, change this to three, and make sure it bounces off again. Now the same deal, just for Saturian, and we wanna scale it up from the bottom. So I wanted to start here. The flex auto workflow, you can set the point to in, very useful. Make a keyframe for the position, so it's out of bounds. To make sure it's back up again and again make sure the bounce is applied now the insane benefit of flex why it's so useful you can just change the bounce because now it's a bit too extreme i want to tone it down a little bit change the amplitude to 10. so now it doesn't clash and looks completely smooth go to where you want to keyframe the opacity again make a keyframe for the opacity here turn it to zero opacity then press shift and also select the fast box blur and also the fill color and now we can just easily copy this onto this keyframe exactly here, select it. Now everything is applied exactly how on the other one. But you could easily reuse this over multiple animations, the whole blur thing, you just have to set it up once. Now the select will be completely easy. Make sure everything is parented to the back like this. So now when we change the background, everything changes with it. To animate the select, easily first split up the text, go to slice. And then the difference is you can press one time on it, then it splits by words, but we want to press by characters, so shift. Animate the button in the background. Beginning, turn it to zero. Again, go to flex and add a bounce. So first of all, it's up with the S. Keyframe it, move it down outside of it. Also go back to the Amex, and we want to copy the fast box blur with the keyframes and the fill as well, and copy it onto here. Blur radius should be at the beginning. And here it's flipped. So also make sure keyframe assistant, time reverse the keyframes. For the position, also add the bounce. Select all of them, make sure they're all on the same length. Then make sure to copy all the keyframes, everything at once. Then select the other ones, apply it to everything else. Then make sure it's parented to the select, so it moves with it. And the mat of it will also be the select. Press a few times on the stagger descending. Oh, perfect, the basic animation of the first card is done. Now we want to duplicate it, but before we do this, Right click, make a new null object, and I will call this 001, and then parent it back to it, but make sure the camera of the element 3D object is not parented because it will fuck everything up. Now we can control everything at the top, then select all of it, press Command C, Command V, then we have an exact duplicate, and press right click, pre-compose, and this will be called MT001. And we will duplicate this a lot of times. To fix this, the main issue is the camera. It's very complex. Go in here and rename this to cam. And then as you can see, everything is cleaned up again and we need to go back into the camera and it always relies on this custom layer. So right now it's non-selected. We'll just make sure that it's the Centurion again. But for this, I want to change it. It will be the Sapphire preferred. Press option, left click, place one here and then it's exactly replaced. To chase Sapphire. And for these two texts, we need to add an effect so it doesn't scream out as clearly that's a duplicate. Mosaic, the default one. Horizontal blocks 130 and the vertical blocks 156. Duplicate it, also paste it onto the Sapphire. Add a color balance, saturation to minus 100. Now that that's done, we need to duplicate this layer a lot of times. It's 28 layers. So press Command D, then drag them all down below. Select all the layers, go to the Align Pro tool, select the wrench 460, then press on the middle in the distribute layers. So now every one of them is stacked on top of each other. Make a new null object and select all of the empty layers and parent them to the scroll. Then go to the beginning, separate the dimensions, make a keyframe for the white position. Then also make a keyframe here. This will be the final form. We'll animate this soon. Also make sure the scale, I'm gonna scale this down a lot. New null object, scale. Make sure the scroll is parented to the scale. And then again, one more null object, and this will be the zoom. We also need the cursor. 
put it into the final position and we need to make a keyframe for the position opacity drag it to zero and make sure it's out of bounds the smooth in easing i'm gonna go back to the select duplicate this take this to the top below the cursor make keyframes for the scale and opacity and this will be the background becoming bigger behind it scale it up to 208 and make sure the opacity is at zero again for the easing gonna apply the snap in then go back into the properties of the layer make sure the fill color is completely black and for the stroke we will pick this green highlight again opacity at the beginning has to be at 11 so it doesn't overpower it too crazy the trick to make this much more clean to duplicate this four times and then we want to stagger this ascendingly duplicate the last one again put this to the front and we'll go into the properties deselect the stroke color the fill color will be completely white and then delink this button here then grab this value and copy it to here also make sure the roundness is at 60 so it's a full circle also duplicate this and stagger this ascendingly now final step to animate all this select everything and make sure everything is parented to the select first make a keyframe for the scale also for the rotation then scale the button down and the rotation to minus seven then again go to the beginning and copy the original frames from before bounce on the rotation applied so every movement i made exactly moves on the beat so it plays into everything the whole movement of the cards to achieve this go into the card go to world transform and then world rotation and make sure to keyframe the y rotation world here this is the default position and then make sure it flips one time just change this to zero and then again it flips back again and for this i added the super smooth and for the other one the smooth in so as you can see it just comes forward once flips to the side and then when it gets pressed in it flips back again goes slowly to the top and then when it's at the top also make sure to keyframe the scale rotation also apply the bounce onto it then it goes in goes to the left and then it goes back again to the original position and the y position it's in its final stage and now it just bounces out now for the scaling it's also applied to the background to this one in the back so they also go back at the same time and to achieve this how all of them get very cleanly in the back just went into here and selected are the last and just went into the rotation and on the exact same i just copied the exact one so everything is synced up go to the rotation but just the difference is the first one has to be rotated them to the max basically but it still shouldn't touch anything then the second one only nine and then the last one only at seven it's here at the bottom and then everything gets moved down and stays here in its final form and then it presses onto it make sure everything is parented to the scroll and the scroll is parented to the scale and everything is parented together everything moves back also the ones below looks very clean the zoom snap out and then the snap in scale is in a lot and make sure it's placed near so you have a clear shot of the main card we selected and then it goes down fade as you can see here and this just makes sure to reveal the background it's exactly how i did in the last video just make a mat make sure to apply the fast blocks blur and make sure to click on the star here so it goes over the borders visible and then it goes up again and what this does is make sure that these are being revealed slowly and then when it drops down it goes even more up so the ones below get invisible and of course to achieve this effect all these empties the mat has to be the fade also make sure all these empties are staggered ascendingly they always made sure when the new one gets revealed it pops up at a deep glow radius to 200 and the exposure to 0.01 we also want to apply this on a select top i also added a grid and a background if you're more interested in how i make these clean backgrounds i can make a dedicated video for it some sauce to make it look like everything fits together one final thing i added many people won't even notice this but i added a blur a very simple blur at the beginning you can see the background is visible many people won't even notice it but it's just butter for the eyes then it's scaled up to three only then as you can see the background gets more hidden it gets pressed down it gets revealed so everything is visible again and then again it goes back to blurred it's even more the eyes are more focused on the card i made a matte exactly so it only is red on the edges a blur applied this is the whole mechanics the whole techniques about this all of the sources dropped is you mad because i'm getting cash if you're interested in a project file, I dropped it on Patreon in the Ebert Club. There are also some valuable premium assets and also some free assets, which you can check out. And if you're interested in the Flex plugin, dropped it like two weeks ago and also two other plugins. The Scope plugin, very valuable for renders. I will do a breakdown on it soon. And the Slice plugin got a massive update. So that's it. Bye, guys. Bye.